Stardate 2245.1. The D7 enters the war. Helm, hold her steady. We need some distance between us and those battle cruisers. I'm trying, sir. Those monsters are fast. Damage report. Shields holding at 60%, aft torpedoes disabled, impulse engines damaged but still operative. We have warp power, but not for long. Bridge, this is engineering. God, what the hell are you doing to my ship? Alexei, divert all non-essential power to the aft shields. Keep those warp engines intact. Mr. Tanaka's on his way down to assist. Do the impossible. Duh. Same as always. Engineering out. And it's not your ship. Laser control. Calm. Get me the Artemis. Red line. Mental conduit. Captain, the Ares is hailing us, sir. Captain Jaconde on main viewer, sir. Guess Karn finally got his D7s launched. Would you look at the size of those things? Status on the Artemis, Captain. Shields are at seventy-two percent. Warp and impulse engines intact. Minor casualties. So far. Just our luck, the first D7 attack would happen here. I don't believe in coincidence, Captain. Do you know what you're saying, Garth? It's the only explanation. We have a spy. Jaconde! Kane, status on comms. Communications relay overload, Captain. I'm rerouting now, just give me a minute. Franklin, damage report. Hull breach on deck six, emergency bulkheads in place. Phaser banks three and four damaged, auxiliary control circuits temporarily disabled. Casualties. Go ahead, doctor. Captain, I have Ramirez in sick bay. He's been hit. He's in critical condition. I need to operate, but I can't while the ship is being blasted apart. Understood. The ship gets blasted apart. It's not going to matter. Kane, I need comms now. Thanks for calling me back. I thought you'd hung up on me. Ramirez is in sick bay. He's critical. Get out of here, Garth. Now we'll handle this. Jump to war with us. With any luck, we can both make it back to the fleet. No. Those D7s are faster than us. Starfleet can afford to lose both our ships plus Ramirez. We'll handle the battle cruisers. Helm, come about. Chikande, no. We'll beam Ramirez to you. We can lower our ventral shield just long enough to get. Captain, we've just taken heavy damage to the ventral power conduits. It's knocked out the transporters. Damn it. Chikande, can you beam Ramirez? Our transporters are out too. Garth, this is the only way. You've got to get Ramirez out of here now. Engineering, slow to one quarter impulse, start venting warp plasma. We've got to make it seem like we've been crippled. Yes, Captain. And Commander, be prepared to shut down antimatter containment. On my mark. But Captain, that'll destroy the ship. I know. I know. Aye, sir. Chikande. It's been an honor serving with you, Captain Garth. Now get the hell out of here. The honor is ours, Artemis. Helm, hard about. Helm, War Factor 7. Now. down antimatter containment unit now.
Captain? Antimatter explosion, sir. Artemis is gone. The Klingon ships are no longer pursuing us. Mr. DeVille, get us back to Earth. Best speed. That ambush cost us dearly. Captain Jaconde, we were brothers in war. But thanks to the Artemis, we made it back safely to Starbase One. Admiral Ramirez survived, but he spent the rest of the war in the hospital bed. In some ways, his decision was the easy decision. Because when you're in the middle of a battle like that, you're not running through your head the calculations of the hundreds of people that are gonna die or the thousands of people back home who that affects. His sacrifice was so pure because all he was thinking about was the mission. It was a federation, it was winning. He knew what had to happen and He didn't give a damn about anything else but achieving the mission. It was pure sacrifice. It was pure purpose. But that's, that's what captains do. Those are the decisions captains make. The Klingons teach their children that a true hunter always cuts the head off of the beast and eats its still beating heart. So they went after Ramirez. He had rallied the fleet, pushed for the launch of the Ares class, and turned the tide of the war. Karn thought if you cut off the head, the body would wither. But he didn't plan on us making it out. Klingons hoped that by taking out Ramirez, it would cripple our morale. But it backfired on them. The Klingons couldn't have known where we were gonna be unless someone tipped them off. Now that we knew that there was a spy, that gave us that one piece of information we needed to finally bring this damn war to an end. Now we knew exactly what we were up against and what it might cost us. And I knew more than ever that we needed Axnor. In the weeks following the loss of the USS Artemis, a dark shadow lingers over the Federation. The newly unleashed D-7 warships prove to be all but unstoppable. Taking a devastating toll on the Federation fleet. The tide of war quickly turns, and a growing sense of urgency spreads throughout Starfleet Command. However, as preparations to execute Garth's battle plan at Axanar continue, Word arrives at Earth that the Vulcan High Council has reached a fateful decision. Vulcan is withdrawing from the war, and the Federation must face this new threat without their strongest member. <laughs>